Welcome everyone to part two of this build video. It is a little bit delayed, my apologies there. I got sick last week, that's pretty much all there is to it. But I left you guys with a cliffhanger, which was what graphics card is going to go into this build. Last week we had the launch of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT and XTX, and as many of you predicted, thanks to my very subtle clues in the last video, the graphics card that's gonna go into this build is not the 6900 XT, it's actually this one, the PowerColor Red Devil Radeon RX 7900 XTX. It is beautiful, it is gorgeous. I've just done a bit of an unboxing of it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to start off with a couple quick reminders. First of all, this system is up for giveaway. It's actually been up for giveaway for the past nine days or so, and that was to help promote our charity live stream, which also happened about nine days ago. That was very successful, but I wanted to let you guys know, first of all, that you can still enter to win this system, at least for the next 24 hours or so, and the Entry link is down in the video's description. To enter, you need to visit the charity donation page for Extra Life that myself and Kyle set up. You do not need to donate to enter to win, but you can still donate through the end of the year. Many thanks to those of you who do. We have raised over $50,000 already for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. For today's video though, I have three things to accomplish. I'm gonna give you guys a much closer look at this graphics card because it is pretty nice looking. Power Color did a great job. Second, I have a bit of rebuilding to do in here because I need to install this graphics card and also swap out the power supply. And finally, if all goes well with that, we will fire it up and see how it looks. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair Voyager A1600 laptop, built for gamers, streamers, and creators alike, and packing an 8-core, 16-thread AMD Ryzen 6800HS processor, Radeon RX 6800M graphics, a 240Hz 16-inch 2560 by 1600 IPS screen with FreeSync, of course, Vengeance DDR5 memory, Stream Deck functionality built in, and topped with a directional mic array and 1080p webcam. It has low-profile RGB Cherry MX mechanical switches too. The feature list goes on, you guys, so click the sponsor link in the video description for more. Couple quick notes before we begin. I'd like to say a big thank you to Lexar for sponsoring part one of this video and providing the eight terabyte SSD configuration that is installed in this system. Lexar also provided a 64 gigabyte kit of their Ares DDR5 memory that's also installed in this build. Check out the part one video if you wanna see me assemble this beast. But also many thanks to Height for providing the case, Asus for providing the motherboard as well as the all-in-one liquid cooler, and to PowerColor of course for providing this monstrous, beastly, Red Devil version of the new AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. Now I just wanna let you guys know, mainly because I got sick last week and that killed a lot of my time to work on this project, I'm not gonna be doing a full review of this card today, but I will post a few links in the video's description of reviews for this card. Not only does it look quite good and stay quite cool, thanks to its uh, frankly monstrous four slot cooler that they've slapped on here, but it's also going to give you much better overclocking support thanks to the fact that they've included three eight pin PCI Express graphics power connectors. And in case I didn't mention, this is a limited edition version of the card and I got uh, number 142 out of 1500. But I suppose the best place to begin with this card is an unboxing. And even the box for this card is quite striking. And uh, one of those things that you often get with something like a limited edition, they spent a little bit more money, a little bit more time developing the packaging for this card. And I will say, given the Red Devil theme, it looks the part with the Red Devil logo right there in the front, as well as these uh, pretty fancy looking clasps that took me a second to figure out, but fortunately it's not that tough to open. Inside you're greeted with uh, this bit of cardstock, which has some information about the card on the back, which I'm totally gonna be reading off of in just a moment here. In the upper section, you get this box, and this box actually has a swappable back plate that is held on by magnets. I guess I should say it can be held on by magnets. And this is actually one of two swappable back plates that's available for this card. This one has uh, some triangles, some tessellation. This red part here will let some light shine through. The nice thing about them is that they're really easy to install and remove. The magnets just hold it in place. And for this one, uh, this red portion right here will let that Red Devil logo shine through and give it a little bit of a framing effect. There's another one too that I have pictures of that I can show you. That one looks pretty cool too, but I don't actually physically have that one here. But PowerColor did want me to let you guys know. These limited edition versions of the Red Devil 7900 cards come with one in the box, but they are not going to be exclusive to these cards. Any Red Devil card, even the non-limited edition ones, which I don't think are out yet, but probably will be coming out, does support these backplates and PowerColor plans to sell them separately in the future as well. 
Now, if there's a downside to the back plates for us specifically, it's probably that this case has a vertical GPU mount, so the back plate would actually be hidden, but uh, I'll try to install it both ways so you can see how it looks sort of in the standard mount orientation as well as the vertical mount. To finish off our unboxing though, the accessories here include this card, which just has some uh, power color social media info. These two little badges, this one, uh, which has what looks kind of like the Eye of Sauron, is magnetized, so you can stick that to a magnetic surface. And then another Red Devil badge right there next to it. And then the five pieces down in this section are a GPU brace, an anti-sag brace, which has become fairly common to include alongside a higher end, especially very heavy graphics card, especially a big three or four slot one, kind of like this one. But uh, you've probably seen this before. It's got a stand for the bottom of your case, an extra extension so you can make it taller. And then a couple of these holders so you can slide those up and down, position it where you want it, and then stick it underneath your graphics card to combat that unsightly GPU sag. The only other accessory is this one, which is an addressable RGB LED cable, because the card does actually have two addressable RGB LED contact points there. So you can wire that up so you can sync it with your motherboard, or PowerColor has their own PowerColor Devil Zone RGB control software that you can use to manually control the RGB LEDs. Other features of this card include a dual BIOS switch that defaults to an overclock or a silent mode, but of course you could manually populate those VBIOSes yourselves. And I think a dual VBIOS switch is something that just should be standard on any card that costs as much as these cards do. It also has a non-swappable backplate, this all metal one right here that has a nice brushed metal gray finish. So you could go with that if you don't want to pop one of the swappable backplates on top of it. It also has a premium 14 layer PCB with a two ounce power layer. It has a 12 plus three plus two plus two plus two phase VRM power delivery configuration, as well as a very substantial four slot cooler uh, with eight six millimeter copper heat pipes uh, to help get the heat away from the GPU and memory and out into the fin array. Uh, and the cooler itself, by the way, is four slot. I think I just mentioned that. And it is 13 inches long, perhaps even just a little bit more than 13 inches or about 33 centimeters long. And I'm getting a little bit better at reading centimeters off of this measuring tape. <laughs> This is a three fan cooler, of course, and the fans themselves have ring blades, meaning there is a ring around the outside of the fan blades that holds them together, and that's great for durability long term. I have certainly broken fan blades on a GPU before, and it's not a good thing. The cooler also has a GPU direct contact copper plate that cools the GPU as well as the VRAM. And for video outs on the back, they did not go with that USB Type-C port like the reference 7900XTX has, but they did go with three DisplayPort 2.1 outs as well as a single HDMI 2.1. So yes, I think I should plug this card in and see how it looks, but first, uh, I got a little bit more reconfiguration to do with the actual PC itself, because if you watched the part one video, you might remember that uh, I didn't use all the parts that I was planning to use, not just the graphics card that I was planning to swap out, but the power supply as well. I had ordered one that didn't arrive in time for that part one build, but fortunately it did show up. It's the Asus ROG Strix 850 watt unit. It's 80 plus gold rated, and it is also black and red. And even though it's in a part of this build that isn't very visible, it's going to match just perfectly with that color scheme, which makes me feel good. Now, since swapping the power supply involved basically unplugging any of the power cables that I had already connected, it's also a good thing that in the poll that I set up for you guys to vote on which cable extensions I should use for this build, you chose not the ones that I chose. I had gone with the gray ones in part one, but everyone wanted to see these Asia Horse red cable extensions, which uh, I don't blame you guys at all. I think they stand out a lot more. And uh, you know, one nice thing about this kit from Asia Horse is I was able to choose one that came with three eight pin PCI Express graphics power connectors. Whereas with the other kits, it didn't have quite enough. So I had to order two kits, but that is what you will see me doing next. First, of course, pulling out all those existing cables and the old power supply, but clearing out that back area of the case, which is pretty substantial. That's one of the things I like about the height Y60 case. It gives you a decent amount of room to work with back there for the power supply and cable management, especially in a build like this where I'm using cable extensions because I have to have the actual power supply cables and then the extensions plug into those. So that means there's a lot of extra cable back here that needs to be tucked away and hidden. And thankfully this new Asus power supply also included a pretty healthy selection of accessories, including some twist ties and these very nice Velcro straps. And that allowed me to mount the two RGB control units that I have back there because I have one for the Lian Lee fans and then I have one for 
for the Asus Ryujin 2 all-in-one liquid cooler up here because it has an LCD screen on it and stuff, so it needs to plug into the motherboard's USB. But I worked out a somewhat tricky way of sort of slinging the Lian Li one up in the corner of the cable management area to sort of tuck it back and out of the way. Also in part one, I installed the two Lexar 2 terabyte SATA SSDs that are back here, but I did not plug them in, so this gave me the opportunity to plug in both their SATA power and SATA data cables. And then from there, I was able to turn my attention back over to these sleeved extensions. Now, I don't have time to run another straw poll, so I hope you guys will agree with me on this one. These actually come with two types of cable combs. One is a little bit more opaque and one's a little bit more see-through. I went with the ones that are a little bit more see-through. I just think they look a little bit better. And I did that with the 24 pin and then also these three eight pins. The uh, two eight pin CPU cables that are at the top of the case, unfortunately have to do a really tight turn going around that corner. So I left the cable combs off of those. I just don't want this system to arrive to the eventual winner and for it to spin up and for that fan to be conflicting with those cables. That will give the eventual winner the option to just remove these uh, six screws across the top to lift up the AIO radiator and add those combs themselves if they really want them to be there. But that pretty much brings us up to speed. As you can hopefully see, I've got the uh, old graphics card removed, new cable extensions are installed, new power supply is installed. And I will say that the uh, cable management area is also also looking much nicer and tidier than it was before because I was actually trying this time. But that brings us to the final steps for this build. Basically, the graphics card. Really small amount of clearance here, which I hope is, which I hope is okay. What could go wrong? Right, so I'm guessing there were at least a few of you who a couple minutes ago, as I was describing my plans and what I intended to do were like, uh, Paul, I, I don't think, I don't think you can do that in the Height Y60 case. And I should know this because I've built in this case before. The Height Y60 case supports vertical full-sized graphics cards only. The rest of the expansion slots are half height. So I actually cannot take this graphics card flip it 90 degrees and install it in the more traditional method. So my apologies to my friends over at PowerColor who were like, hey Paul, we really like the build you're putting together. It seems like it's gonna be great for the Red Devil 7900 XTX, but we're really trying to feature these cool swappable backplates. Do you think you can do that? And I was like, sure, I'll just, you know, install it both ways and show them both, but I can't do that. I was kind of curious if I could still install the swappable backplate, like right here. So close. Oh, hey look, see? There you go. It can still be installed even when it's like this. So here's kind of what it boils down to for me. I needed to get this video made before the giveaway for this system ends and give you guys at least like 24 hours of heads up with the actual graphics card installed. But I'm also essentially out of time to do anything further with this, like a little bit of testing to see if this graphics card right up against this window is gonna be starved for air at all because I'm sure that's what a lot of you are thinking as well. I did do some testing. There is clearance, so they are gonna get some air, but is it gonna be a good amount of air? It's hard to say. As you can probably see, uh, the Red Devil has zero fan mode. Uh, when the card isn't warm enough, the fans don't need to spin. That's a pretty common feature these days, but definitely one that I want to have on a graphics card versus not. You can also probably see a bit of the LED lighting right out of the gate, and it is all red. Now the rest of the LEDs in this build will switch to red too in just a moment after the system actually boots up into Windows and the Lian Li control software takes control. Actually, all the Lian Li control software is doing right now is syncing with the motherboard. Incidentally, the Lian Li fans also have zero fan mode, and so they're not gonna spin until the uh, operating system actually boots up. Hope it's not trying to boot from one of those SATA drives I just plugged in. Maybe I got something here, thinking about it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Just had to, just had to give it a moment there. Few moments have passed and I, uh, well, let me let me show you guys what's happening. Um, so as you can see, the system just shut itself off and I've connected a monitor and figured out that it is giving me a CPU over temperature error, which is a 99% indication that the pump is not running on the all-in-one liquid cooler. Now I know that pump works because the system was already up and running, Windows installed and everything's good. I'm totally able to diagnose and fix that problem to dig back into the cable management back here to figure out if something got unplugged or jostled or just isn't making a proper connection somewhere. And I also have the capability of like testing the system to give you guys some actual better feedback on the performance. What I don't have any more of right now is time. So I'm really, 
really, really, really frustrated that I got sick last week because that really pushed everything back. Honestly, I've been trying to get a lot done in this holiday season and I think I just bit off a little bit more than I can chew. So I apologize to Power Color for not being able to give a better showcase of their graphics card. I apologize to you guys for not being able to provide a more satisfying end to this video, but I'm simply out of time and I have to post something so that you guys can be notified that this system is up for giveaway. It is still up for giveaway and the winner should be chosen later this week, but the system probably isn't going to be shipped out until mid-January, which means I should probably be doing a follow-up video on it. So I promise that I will come back with a follow-up video on this build at some point in the future. I'm not making any promises as to dates because we're getting towards the end of the year and I need a little bit of time off if that's not totally evident to you guys. But I did want to say once again, thank you to all the sponsors who helped make this build possible. Lexar and PowerColor in particular. I'll post links to all the parts and everything everything down in the video's description, and I'll be back at some point in the future with a follow-up to give you guys some resolution as to getting the system up and running, seeing how it finally looks, maybe testing the graphics card to see how that works too. For now though, I'm out of steam. Sorry to end this one on a fail note, but that's all the time I have. Thanks again for watching. Enter to win if you're in the US or Canada. If you're international, we've got a couple international giveaways down there too. And of course, thanks to everyone for your generosity and donations towards Children's Miracle Network Hospitals through our Extra Life charity live stream and ongoing fundraiser. Thanks for watching this video, you guys. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out just to make me feel a little bit better about myself. And we'll see you all in the next video.